How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week nine, and we uh, we get to host the defending national champs, but underperforming uh, the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, we're favored to win this game. They're a B-plus, so it's a winnable game. They're only going to be like nine, low 90s overall. Uh, who have they played? They lost to Toledo in overtime. They lost to Nebraska, Boston College. They beat Duke in overtime. Obviously, they lost to North Carolina, but they got slaughtered 72 to 10. And then they just beat FAU. So their second win of the season came last week against a not great Florida Atlantic. They have to come up against us and we'll take a look again at our schedule. We lost to the now number nine NC State team. They just took their first loss. That was an embarrassing one, an embarrassing loss to BYU and a game that we should have won against number eight Georgia Tech. But two of our three losses against top 10 teams. And I expect as we move down a couple weeks from now, on the road at UNC, number one in the country. They just slaughtered Miami. That's going to be a tough one for us. But I'm feeling kind of confident. Uh, Recruiting-wise, I don't think we have a crazy amount to do. Only 50 points so far to give out. Um, Only one guy visiting. Two guys ready for visits. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Jason Walker, 68 overall running back. We're behind a bit. He's probably coming this week. And the defensive end, Jared Robinson, uh, we are way in the lead there, so let's just go ahead and get those complimentary visits. I think that this game could go our way. Um, and actually, with Jason Walker, we're going to send him later, hoping to get some decent uh, extra points out of that visit. And just looking around at points uh, where we're picking him up and whatnot, it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to be moving some points away from guys. We have five guys to try to scout this week, which is a little bit worrisome. Um, and a couple of guys that just don't seem like we're in a great spot to try to pick them up. There's uh, just so many uh, great players that we want to get that I'm not sure that we can get all of them. So we'll hope for the best there. A lot of like, these guys we're actually not too far behind on. Uh, we just don't have the points to give to them right now. But honestly, it kind of looks like uh, for the most part, we're just uh, trying to find points to give. And I don't even know if we have a whole lot of points to give especially with trying to scout guys, but that might just be a problem that we have to deal with. And I guess we'll just kind of be scouting one of these guys at a time and hoping that they're good. The wide receiver, Adam Brown. Is he a bust? No, he's 79 overall and we're only 650 behind. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. So we could be potentially picking up some, uh, some gems that have just been glanced over by the rest of the other teams. Top 25 wise, we have... Ranked matchups, Arizona State, number two in the country, undefeated, will be playing on the road at USC. We've got number seven, Texas, playing against TCU. And we've got 17 and 18 in LSU and Texas at A&M playing. Uh, we need some of these low-ranked teams to maybe lose their games. I want to get ranked again. The sooner we get ranked, the better. Although, maybe it's a curse for us because we don't seem to stay ranked for very long. And the, the more important thing... Before we go and take a look at some conference standings, Reese White, number one in the Heisman race right now. We're going to continue to just try to feed him the ball, get him as many touchdowns as possible because it would be so incredible if we managed to pull in a Heisman in our first season in the ACC. And speaking of our first season in the ACC, we'll go ahead and check out conference standings. Right now, we are in third in our division, three and two uh, in conference play. Not likely to beat out North Carolina, but we're honestly pretty high up in the division in the coastal how about the atlantic uh syracuse and wake forest fighting at the top of that so nc state was up there but they just took a loss last week which isn't very good for them in the american you got usf and ucf oh my gosh a lot of teams undefeated in conference cincinnati smu and temple all basically tied for first with the uh the bulls getting that tiebreaker just being perfect on the season the Big 12 has the 5-0 number four Cowboys of Oklahoma State in first place. Only two conference games played, though, and they're followed up by a TCU team and I guess West Virginia, although West Virginia has two conference losses and the four teams below them only have one. So things can really change a lot, I think, in the Big 12. In the Big 10 East, it looks to be between Michigan and Ohio State, which is no surprise. But the question is, which one of these two teams is going to hold on? Will we see maybe Michigan go undefeated until they play Ohio State? That seems to be the case. And uh, in the Big Ten West, it's uh, Iowa and Wisconsin. And it really does just seem to be between them. Wisconsin 3-0, and 
but three and three uh, outs are just overall. So three out of conference losses is pretty weak, but maybe they just had to get it together before they came into their conference. Iowa doing pretty well. CUSA East is being uh, led by Old Dominion and Charlotte. Well, the CUSA West is uh, topped by UTSA, surprisingly. Our independents, we only have two left, Army and BYU, uh, both doing okay. This BYU team shouldn't have beat us, but they did. Their two and six were one of their two wins. Army is currently four and three. In the MAC East, we've got Buffalo leading the way, but not too far behind will be Ohio and Akron. And the MAC West is right now held by Toledo. If they win out, they're solid for that conference. The Mountain Division of the Mountain West sees Boise State and Wyoming. That'll be a battle, even records. So that one's just going to go down to the wire between them. We think Boise's pretty good. Uh, and in the West Division, it's Nevada and Fresno State. So pretty close rates so far in the Mountain West. The Pac-12 North is all Stanford's at this point. 5-1 and one in conference. They've played pretty much all their conference games already, or their, most of them. Uh, my Ducks struggling 3-3, three and 1-2 three, and two on the season. You can't be a 99 overall team in two in this bad. Meanwhile, in the South, Arizona State is undefeated, sitting at number two in the country. But this game against USC that they have this week could uh, really shape things up for the South. Uh, if Arizona State wins it, they're in the driver's seat for the South. If USC wins it, they take over that spot. Our SEC East is between Georgia and Florida currently. And the West is between LSU and then I guess you drop down to Auburn and Alabama. Bama surprisingly do, doing better than we expected. They took a pretty bad loss earlier, but they're 5-1 and one in number 13. Auburn's number 20 and LSU's 17th. So Alabama actually the highest ranked team here in the, in the West, but they are only third in their division. And our final conference, the Sun Belt, our old conference. We've left it currently in the hands of Troy and Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. Uh, well, I'm curious to see how that one shapes up. Kind of surprised to see Appalachian State 0-6 on the season. Uh, Texas State's not as surprising, but you would expect the Mountaineers to do better. Somehow only 77 overall. Thank goodness that's not us. That's for sure. Um, let's get into this game against Miami. Again, we're favored to win. It doesn't look like they're great. They don't have a great turnover differential, even though it's like four times as good as ours. But uh, we have a chance here in front of a couple of recruits to do really, really well. Let's hope for the best. We're just going to let's go white pants here. Um, never mind. This looks atrocious. Uh, how about the there we go. We'll go the black jersey with the white pants. That's not as bad. And the Hurricanes have, I think, a lot of cool uh, options in this. They've got the Miami Knights. They've got a 2018. Oh my gosh, they have so many fantastic options. Let's just go through it. The white helmet, the Miami Knights helmet. So just those two. We'll probably keep them in the white. The green jersey, the 2018 one. Uh, I like that throwback quite a bit. Uh, and the Miami Knights one and the white one. And the 2019 one and the orange one. So just a lot of options for them there. White pants, orange pants, greens pants, old school or 2018 pants, 2019 pants, Miami Knights pants. There's so many freaking options. We're going to go ahead and give them this alternate four though. The green pants, the white jersey, the white helmet. I think it's a decent look for them. But most importantly, let's get into this game and hope for the best. So Miami has a mediocre offense. They seem to pass the ball pretty well, but they haven't been great running the football um, defensively. They don't look great either. So I don't know. I feel like maybe we have more of a chance than I'm giving our uh, our team credit for. A couple of recruits visiting. We're not too worried about getting those goals. If they happen, they happen, but we won't chase them. Best players, 90, 90, and 89 overall. Free safety, wide receiver, defensive tackle. But, I mean, just their, uh, you know, their their best players aren't much better than ours. But uh, that just means they have better depth than we do. And a running back is doubtful. So if we see uh, Timmons, we know that he is playing. But he's playing a little bit injured. So who knows? Maybe they try to sit him out for this game. So we're back here at Brooks Stadium trying to continue to win. I think it would put us, what, three win streak? Something like that. Miami will get the coin toss. They're going to go with heads, and it is heads, so I assume we'll start with the football. We will. Uh, no wind on the day. Offense needs to be good. All righty. 
Our main man, three swipe back to return this ball. Gets this game underway. It will be returned. Oh, the blocking looks pretty good. So we're getting a decent little bit of field position out past the 35 to start this one off. And the man who had four rushing touchdowns last game. Well, I want to give him the ball, but look at how they're playing. No deep safeties on this one, although they're not getting too crazy. So uh, let's see. We can maybe just beat these guys through the air. First down, passing the ball. We find Tyson Mobley easily for 17 yards. Maybe a little bit of a risky throw. The linebacker could have jumped that route, but uh, we get it done, and we're across midfield just like that. They've come out showing a lot of pressure early on this one, but hopefully that is no matter to us trying to run the ball. Reese getting a positive yard on the play, but that was a good job disengaging from that defensive end. In this game, we're definitely going to have to utilize Grayson's legs. Uh, read options, scrambling out of the pocket. All that's going to be very necessary. But if the blocking from the wide receivers is so good, it's going to be fantastic. Grayson makes a guy miss as well, gets 21 yards. We're cruising down the field across the 25 already. Try to continue to run the ball this first down, giving it to Reese. And I wanted to cut it out to the edge, but it didn't seem like it was going to be there. So we just made sure that we went forward. And they do kind of have a safety back on this play. We'll see if we can get them with the play action. And let's just go with the safe throw. Give it to Malden, who didn't get anything. Oh, I, it's so frustrating when they get that weird little movement and don't go forward. I think there was other guys open, but I was just worried about making the, uh, the right throw or making sure it was completed, so... We end up getting nothing on the play as I'm going to scramble for this, but no, Malden's open for <laughs> the first down. We might have been across the line when we threw that, but we get away with it. it gives us a first and 10 across the 15. Again, trying to get uh, Reese running. Oh, he breaks a tackle. And just like that, we've got a first and goal and we're down at the three yard line. First down will do what they expect us to do and hand this one off to the fullback. JJ Bar can go forward. He's got some positive yards for us. That's two there. Puts us probably at the one. And here from the one, we're going to give it to Reese. See if we can just look to the sideline. They don't budge. Second and goal. Reese has it easily. The blocking was fantastic. And he's got another touchdown. Well, not getting a crazy amount of yards this season, but we're getting him into the end zone. And we take a 7-0 lead over the defending national champs. And look at that. Number nine, NC State loses to Boston College. So that's two in a row for them. We'll go ahead and uh, kick this one off. Hoping that the defense can do something this game. They had a great game uh, last time out against Virginia. I don't feel confident here. Ooh, they got a good return. They're almost out to the 35. I don't see their running back that's injured. I don't know if maybe he was uh, a backup to begin with, but he's not in on this play as they will go to the air. And the quarterback has all the time in the world to throw. Throws one up, and it's picked off by Aaron Diggs. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and we just got the ball back on a turnover. Oh, my gosh. One play, and the defense does it. I thought he was about to get Moss, but he came up with it. Shame we couldn't get a return. It's now time for the offense to open this game up. I'm not going to expect this to be an easy drive starting from the 16. But anything that we can get is going to be fantastic. I would definitely settle for a field goal to make it 10-0. Reese picked up four on the first down. Carry as we'll go back to the ground with a little read option. It looked like it was going to be really good, but Grayson gets chased down by the linebacker. Now it's third and inches. Not a lot of room that we have to go to pick this one up, but we're still going to try to hope for the best. We want more than the inches. And we got a little bit more Reese. Five yards on the carry. We're doing a good job running the ball. This might be a good time for a play action. We'll see if somebody can come open early on this one. As, yeah, Malden is open, but, ooh, we couldn't quite get the ball to him. Grayson's first incompletion, and it'll uh, just be second and ten. And we'll go ahead and just go designed pass on this play. Looks like they're going to bring a lot of pressure. Circles open. <laughs> Dion Fountain was wide open for the first down, but we get sacked, and it's third and a mile. That is brutal. We we oh, we would have been looking really good if we completed that. Instead, we're going to have to throw it up, and it is just batted away incomplete. Fourth and 18, so we can't do anything after the turnover, and we're going to be forced to punt this one away. I'm going to see if maybe we can get a decent-looking one. No, no chance on the gunner for Reed. 
Uh, so they're gonna have great field position to start this drive. Cross midfield, I don't like that. First and 10. They went to the air last time. We're bringing a blitz, expecting them to go to the ground. They do, and the blitz works for Alasa too. Oh man, dialing up the, the pressure here so far working. I'm a little bit worried for an out route here on second and 12, and they will go to the air. There's the out route. Reed catches up and dropped another interception. Oh, that would have been perfect. It's third and 12 now. Really, really hoping that we can get this done on third down. Trying to defend. They're looking deep. They're going deep. The pass is up and Reed does a good job deflecting it. Tyler Van Dyke, the quarterback for Miami, is 0-3 to start this game. And Miami's going to be forced to punt this ball away. Fourth and 12, not faking it there. We should just be able to see this one bounce into the end zone. Ooh, got a bit of a good bounce, but not enough. So we'll take the touchback. And with 41 seconds left in the first quarter, the offense can come out for the third time in this game and try to get things going. The running very good on that first down. Reese picks up all 10 that we needed. And we'll just try to continue to keep it on the ground. They're being very aggressive, it seems, in their pass coverage. So I'm very worried to throw it all that often. But I guess that they stop us at the line of scrimmage, that's never going to work out. Kind of going to expect to see some pressure on this play action. So we're ready to get the pass off or just get outside the pocket. Throw in the timing route. Bedgood comes down with that near midfield. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So we end up... Uh, Kind of dominating that first quarter. We should be up 10 or 14 nothing. Kind of struggled on the second drive, but the defense is doing phenomenal. It has not allowed them to pick up a first down yet, and we could really open this lead up. If we can manage to just get this done against this Miami team, I'm going to feel really confident about the rest of the season. Right now, we're not honestly running all that strong, but uh, moving pretty well. We're going to bring Dion over as an extra blocker. Out on the edge, pull one of those corners away from where we're trying to run the counter and allow Reese to get forward for three. Third and short here. And from where we're at, this could be four down territory. We are going to run it up the middle, which I know is dangerous, but I just don't really trust our passing. And if Reese wants to fall forward and get everything that we need, that's going to do it just well enough for me. And we'll see now if we've suckered him in. Maybe we can find Dion Fountain deep. No, we're hit as we're throwing it. It would have been a 50-50 ball otherwise. Lucky not to take the sack and maybe lucky not to have been able to get the pass off because I think that that would have been uh, likely intercepted. Second and 10, we're going to run the ball. Nothing doing there for Reese. Oh, uh, linebacker absolutely clogged the gap and we lose three, so it's third and long again. Third and 13, we will go to the air here. Trying to maybe get outside the pocket. Throw it, we find DJ Johnson. A name not often called, but he's wide open and holds onto it for 15 yards and another coastal first down. One thing that's going to be really nice for us in this one is just how tired Miami's defense could get. We've had the ball a lot of the time here so far in this game. And our defense is going to be really well rested for the second half so far. We're just getting enough so far on these runs as second and six will go with a little misdirection and... Reese again is able to pick up positive yards on a lot of these plays. So far, four of five on third downs will go to the air. And trying to get it to Reese. Yes, he finds it. He holds on and the linebacker in the area, the DB couldn't get to him. So we're just really burning these guys on such a long drive. Reese, oh my gosh, the blocking was phenomenal there. We got seven yards on first down. I know that I say that these plays never work, but we're still going to try one. The draw play on second and three. Reese actually got great blocking and got enough for the first and goal. Inside the 10. I think that was inside the five. Looking to score the touchdown. And here we're going to go with the read option. First and goal. Grayson's going to keep it. They're going to miss and Grayson is going to go untouched into the end zone. It's a two touchdown lead now for Coastal. 246 left in the half. And that was a 74-yard, like, 15-play drive. Just absolutely burned the clock. Almost four minutes uh, a game clock burns, which on six-minute quarters is a lot of time. And I'm going to take a really, really big risk on this first down, bringing the safety blitz. 
with not a whole lot of time left uh, in the half, I was worried that they were going to pass the ball. Thankfully, it was only a screen. That could have been maybe a touchdown. Uh, all right, we got to just assume that they're only passing here. That was this quarterback's first completion of the day. As now they'll run it, but there it is. Durham Finch went to the tackling clinic, and he's going to drop Cheney Jr. for a loss of four. That was absolutely fantastic. Is they're going to run it again up the middle, and this man's breaking tackles all over the place. You can, you're not allowed to just shove that many guys off. He stiff armed half the team on that play. Is third and four. They're going to go to the air and wide open over the middle is a man making a one-handed catch. Xavier Restrepo just absolutely went showboat on that. And they get a first down and they're moving really, really quick on this drive. They find Redding the third that time and they take their first time out of minute and 43 here in the half. If these guys are going to score, I hope that it happens soon. Just so that we have the uh, the availability. That's going to be a run, isn't it? Just so we have the availability to score ourselves. And yeah, that's a... Wow. This man is running way too well right now. He's got a couple of big carries on that drive. And Miami does get on the board. Uh, I'm glad that the defense got a couple of stops early. Because I don't know if they can do it now. So thankfully, they left us with a minute and 40 seconds uh, in all our timeouts to get a drive in. But we need to be passing the ball a lot, which you guys know can be a little bit dangerous. But Reese gives us decent field position again out past the 35. So we continue to have luck moving the football as this first down stepping to back to pass, getting outside the pocket and finding a guy wide open over the middle. It's DJ Johnson. Oh my gosh, nobody was covering him. We go 32 yards downfield just like that. They completely forgot to cover that man. And we're going to just get rid of this one. DJ actually drops the pass, but that's good because it'll stop the clock. They brought a ton of pressure on that one. Second and 10. It looks like they're going to bring pressure again. We're actually going to throw this one up. Let's uh, let's do some hot routing here and just make sure that uh, we have a good chance to pick up a, a first down. Going to send some guys deep. And... It's a 50-50 ball for Dion Fountain in the end zone. <laughs> he dropped it. Oh, it hit his hands, but the DB was able to break the pass up. So third and 10, we're going to step back and try to throw the ball. We have bed good. He held on to it. It's fourth and inches. We're definitely going to go for this one. We could take the field goal and go up by uh, two scores again, but instead we're going to go QB sneak. Let Grayson pick up the uh, first down. That was kind of a weird one. We're going to take our first time out. And I just want you guys to see again the weird move that Grayson just pulled. He went into a dive and somehow contorted his body to turn it into a slide in the middle of the dive. That is peak athleticism right there. How do you... That's incredible. 52 seconds on the clock. We're going to step back to pass again on first down. They're bringing pressure. There is Bedgood wide open inside the five. Couldn't extend to get the touchdown, but it's first and goal. We're going to come out in the hurry up and potentially try this halfback plunge. Reese White first and goal gets into the end zone. We extend the lead back up to 14, but we did leave 47 seconds on the clock. So we need the special teams to slow these guys down here. Don't give up good field position. And oh no, they got really good field position. I will say if we give up a field goal here, it won't be the end of the world, but I certainly don't want to give up the touchdown. We know it's going to be a lot of passing. The question is, where is it going to go to? Diggs can't get the tackle there. Neither can Reed. Neither can Baker. Shelton finally gets there. Good thing is that burned a lot of time and forced them to take their second time out. Certainly not something that we want to have happen again, though. We can't allow them to get those first downs uh, over the middle of the field. Shelton can't break that one up, so Restrepo gets his second catch of the day. I'm going to go in the hurry up now. 28 seconds. Still only one timeout. They're going to pass. Looking over the middle, they have a guy. We got there late. It's going to be enough for the first down. It'll stop the clock for now. We'll see now if we can get a little bit of man coverage on this first down. 17 seconds. The clock is burning away, but not soon enough. That's going to be a man with a first and goal, and he gets out of bounds to fully stop the clock. So we'll see what we can do. I'm actually going to try to use a defensive lineman for once. We don't do it often, and... Ooh, we got the stop for now. They're going to have to either go for this or, yeah, kick the field goal. They take the timeout. 
and it seems like by about a yard, we will have managed to prevent them from scoring the touchdown. The field goal is up and it's easily good, but it's still an 11 point lead for us and we could potentially return this kick for a touchdown, you never know. And I'm gonna try something a little bit tricky here. I don't think it'll work, but you never know. Reese is our return man. But Grayson's got the ball for now. He pitches it back to Reese. The pitch is actually complete. There's nowhere for him to go, though. And the weird attempt at maybe like a reverse doesn't work out. So uh, it was worth the shot. We go into the locker room up 21 to 10. Miami does get the ball. But even if they score, we'll have the lead, which is great news. If the offense can just continue to produce, we will be looking really solid in this game. And if the defense can get one or two more stops, honestly, I'm going to say just one more stop. We should be able to win this game if we execute. So we'll kick this ball off to start the third quarter and just hope that uh, things go well for us as we haven't really good done a good job on special teams, but we don't do too bad there, letting them just get past the 25. We'll bring a small little blitz to start off this drive. First down, kind of expecting a pass. Redding comes in motion, and they do hand it off up the middle, and... Somehow they get eight yards, even though he's being tackled like almost the whole way. So this running back just absolutely dominating us right now. They're going to hand it off again. Mackey's in the backfield to hit him and stop him for a loss of a yard. And uh, here on third and three, we expect them to go to the air. It's an option out towards the edge of the quarterback. Kept it. He's going to lose four and the defense will get that stop that we needed. Sidney McRae was able to wrap up the quarterback and hold on to him to get the tackle for loss. And now we can try to get a good return with Reese, hoping for decent field position. We'll take that, starting just at about midfield. Very tempted to just try and burn clock on this drive, but we definitely need to make sure that we're running our offense and trying to score the ball. Grayson broke a tackle and managed to get forward for six on that play. Really strong running from the quarterback on that one. We'll hand it off to Reese now on second down, and... His blocking is enough to get the first down in five more yards. Reese isn't averaging a whole lot per carry, but he's getting enough, and he's he's getting it pretty consistently. So that's great news as we're going to try to scramble, and so, was worried about fumbling. Grayson gets absolutely popped just at the line of scrimmage. I know how good that this uh, Miami secondary can be, so I'm really hesitant to throw those 50-50 balls right now trying to run but they're really dialing up the pressure and now we've got a third and long we'll have to pass we'll see if somebody comes free not really uh a deep safety on this one that could be it malden wide open inside the 10 oh they just didn't expect that fade from him and he burns past his man and goes completely unchecked for a first and goal I absolutely expected that to be uh, a situation where we were forced to go for it on fourth or punt the ball away, but we get it done, and now we're inside the five with a second and goal. Reese already has two touchdowns on the day. We'll give him the dive and see if he can pick up his third, and there it is. We extend the lead again. The offense is absolutely cooking today, and Reese will continue to just launch that Heisman campaign into the stratosphere. So we're sitting now at 28 to 10 midway through the third quarter. I gotta wonder if there's a chance for the defense to continue to play this well. Oh my gosh, we almost absolutely... Okay, well, never mind. I was gonna say we almost really killed them on special teams, but they're gonna get themselves called for a clipping. That'll send them back further than our tackle would have. And we're gonna switch things up just a little bit here. Going into the nickel, I'm expecting them to start passing the ball more. Oh, great job disengaging from the block and getting that tackle for Shelton. But we'll definitely expect uh, a lot of passing for the rest of this game. There's a wide open out route to Restrepo who breaks one tackle. There's a flag on the play, though. Could this one be coming back? Maybe a holding call. Ooh, another clipping. Let's see. It is enough to keep it uh, second down. It must have been really far downfield, but we'll take that. So a little bit weird in that they just went from second and eight to uh, to a second and three now, but we'll definitely take it. And, oh, I left my man wide open. <laughs> so, well, they got that first down anyways. It just took a little bit more time. I'm going to continue to try and bring some pressure. I know that they're going to want to run. 
because their running back has done such a good job so far. The Blitz has come in there, and well, we disengaged again from the block to stop uh, a crazy big gain. These guys are definitely doing a good job moving, though. Second and four, they go to the air. We were kind of ready for it, and oh my gosh, they kind of ran a little rub route on our own DBs there. So Tyler Van Dyke, the quarterback for Miami, started this game 0-3. Oh my gosh, Durham Finch with the interception and a pick six. What just happened? Are we going to score the defensive touchdown? I was... What? The pressure must have got there. He was being hit as he was throwing, I guess. And Durham with the eagle eye spots it. Gets his hands on it and extends this lead 35 to 10. I was about to say how the quarterback started the game 0 for 3 through the air with an interception and has since gone for 10 completions in a row. Uh, but then he threw another pick. Oh my gosh, the defense is incredible. I'm actually curious now. I think that might have been considered a fumble by the game. Maybe he fumbled it on the sack and uh, just happened to be picked up before it hit the ground. So regardless, even if they score a touchdown here, we're in such good position now. The pressure being dialed up has worked phenomenally as these guys will continue to pass, but I mean, the clock is their biggest enemy at this point. We'll bring the same blitz that we brought when we forced, I guess, what was a fumble. And they go over the middle to the running back for another first down. They, see, now their offense is cooking, but we've done enough early in the game that we've really kind of opened it up and, and allowed ourselves all this leeway. Oh my gosh, that was a risky throw. There's a good stop on defense. And we're just going to continue to bring the pressure. Uh, it seems when we blitz against these guys, that is one of the things that works the best. It's forcing them to make these bad throws. They technically caught that. I think he was out of bounds there. Unfortunately for us, they're going to go hurry up. Do we challenge this? We're going to challenge this. We never use them. We might as well if it makes it third and longer. So we'll see. I just feel like that foot, the first foot that he caught it with was out of bounds. And since they went in the hurry up, they were safe. Ah, uh, just barely got that or kept that foot down. So we'll lose a timeout, but it was worth the chance. Oh no, we're getting booed for that. Apparently the fans know better than I do on that play is third and seven. They're going to go to the air and we picked it off the all user pick. I baited him into the throw. It's the third turnover created in the defending national champs are going to start their season so negatively like two and five at this rate. Obviously the defense uh, has played a big factor, but. The offense has been getting it done as well. And if they can do it one more time on this drive, that'll be massive. Great eight yards for Reese. White already has three touchdowns. If we can get him over 100 yards rushing on the day, that would be fantastic. But no, it's going to be Grayson getting the carry and losing a little bit. Uh, and we're going to let this clock burn out on the quarter and go into the fourth for our third and three. So at the end of three, we have the ball, a chance to maybe score again, and we're up 25 points. It's 35-10, and we have just dominated both sides of the ball in this game. Such a rarity, especially against uh, a pretty high overall team. Six of eight on the day on our third downs. We are going to go to the air here and outside the pocket. X might be open. O might be open. Trying to make a risky throw. We found Aaron Bed good for 19 yards. And we get to midfield with another first down. That was a pretty ballsy throw that we just made there, but it worked out. And we can just continue to move on offense and let Reese just churn out the yards. They have not done a good job stopping us consistently today and that might have been their best defense of the option yet so that gives us another third down but at this point i'm gonna start burning the clock in this game try to get rid of everything that they have they're bringing some pressure outside the pocket oh i've tried to throw it away oh he took a big sack fourth and 19 we'll punt this ball away that was uh just a great job by the the defense good play call there we're gonna see can we cheese this one past the return man no, it bounces right into his hands, so they have a uh, good field position to start this drive, but not a whole lot of time. Four minutes left in the game. So we uh, we started well, and then when they adjusted, we made our adjustment to go into the nickel, and that seems to have been working fantastic. 
Oh my gosh, they threw this screen and even that was almost picked off. There is just nothing going well right now for this team. As will pop Restrepo right as he gets the ball. It's another third and long for Miami. The Hurricanes have just been dusted so far in this one. If we get the stop here, you got to think that's ball game. Waiting, waiting, trying to be patient all the time in the world for this quarterback. And he's hit as he's throwing, so it's fourth and seven. I'm sure he had somebody open there. I know I got burned by my man. But we hold well enough on the play to force the fourth and seven. And this one, they will step back to pass. And, oh, there's a man wide open. Peyton has it. Oh, I missed the tackle. Such an easy tackle, and we missed. So we allow the 50-yard touchdown. That's not optimal. Uh, we just need to make sure that we recover this onside kick. I got to say, 35-10 as a final score would look a lot better than 35-17. But we give it up, and... Whoo -hoo -hoo. Fountain able to uh, field that. It didn't go far enough, but I was worried we were going to touch it and they would recover. Thankfully, the hands team works out well enough and we can just really start to burn the clock. I got to imagine if they are serious about winning this game, they'll start taking their timeouts, but maybe not recovering the onside kick is enough for them to wave the white flag. Regardless, I'm going to continue to run the ball here. We want Reese to get those yards. Any chance that we get for him to... Uh, up his standings for that Heisman is going to be fantastic. Oh, great run. That time gets 13 on the carry. And with his 26th carry of the day, he's going to get stopped short. So he needs three yards to get to that 100-yard uh, mark now. They know the run is coming. We just need one play to stop it or just to get positive yards. And the blocking is phenomenal there. Reese did enough. Five yards. That should put him at 101 on the day. Unfortunately, we're not done with him yet. We'll run it up the middle on third and six. And then probably kick a field goal to really seal this one out. 38-17, I think with less than a minute, there's no way they can come back from that. So Frederick will come out for the 33-yarder. And that one's going to be good. Canned it down the middle. Oh, look at that. Uh, nice win record. 24-10 and 10 as the head coach here is Coastal. And this should be the final kickoff of the game. 25 seconds left. They'll have to burn a few seconds on the return. And then the defense just needs to get uh, a stop here and there. And that should be enough. And I know this doesn't matter a whole lot, but this final 20 seconds, we're going to bring in the, uh, the second team defense just to let them get a couple of reps, just in case we worry about transfer time or something like that. So Miami will take a timeout. And I got to say, it's not very often that we're... Uh, you know, getting three turnovers in a game and not giving up any. Uh, so that was a good job stopping the run from the defense there. I'm really curious what their play calling is, if they're still taking timeouts but running the ball with 10 seconds left. But uh doesn't matter because this one is pretty much over. Uh, final timeout taken. This should be the last play of the game. So that we don't give up the touchdown, we will go cover four on it. But I can't expect they do all that while they're going to throw it out in the flat. Stop wasting our time. Regardless, it allows our guys to do, uh, you know, get in a few more plays. And we can win this one 38-17. to 17. I did not expect that to be the outcome when we came into this game. So fantastic. Grayson had a really good game. We didn't turn the ball over. And how about Reese? 105 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. That better be enough to keep him up top that Heisman board. Oh, man. How about the defense, though? Three turnovers. That's incredible. I just can't get over how good of a game that ended up being. Nothing crazy happening around the country, but how about our, just our team? We gave up 251 passing yards, but we decimated them, time of possession and turnovers, and we held them to, again, 28 rushing yards. We're not allowing teams to run the ball on us. Uh, which is phenomenal, especially because they had some really big running plays, but we did enough uh, throughout the game to mitigate those. And we ran for 128, 18 first downs. Reese, again, our offensive player of the game. Aaron Diggs, our defensive player of the game, especially with that interception. I put Durham Finch up there as well with the scoop and score touchdown. And I just, uh, I can't get over. Man, there was a chance for us to, to beat them by more, but everything worked out well. So we improved a 6-3 on the season. We're now officially bowl eligible Miami. Again, defending national champions. I can't, uh, I don't know. It's just so incredible. 
that uh, we beat them, but it's also kind of crazy that they're now two in five. There's a chance they might not make a bowl game if they continue to lose like this, but we don't care too much about that. We get a nice bye week to rest on after that game. Maybe we can celebrate quite a bit, uh, but we're just going to advance to that and just see what uh, maybe we picked up some recruits or, or where maybe if we're ranked now. Let's see. Did we get anything good? Todd Parks commits to South Carolina. Nobody commits to us. We have to be getting so close with a bunch of guys, but just uh, doesn't happen this week. And we're not ranked either. We're getting no love at all. Top 25 polls. What happened around the country? We know there was something crazy. Uh, number two, Arizona State did lose to USC. So that's another team that has taken their first loss. Right now undefeated at the top will be Michigan, Oklahoma State, and North Carolina. And this Arizona State team will now have to play number eight, Washington. Next week, we've got Oklahoma and Iowa State. TCU lost to uh, now number six, Texas. And NC State lost to Boston College in overtime and will now have a chance to get a little bit of revenge against their rivals in North Carolina, the number one team in the nation, hoping to continue to stay undefeated. I would like to see an upset there. Uh, what else we had? Number eight, Georgia Tech losing to Duke and Texas A&M lost to LSU as well as Iowa State and Syracuse. A lot of teams losing. Uh, we're starting to get some votes again. Sitting now at 31st. So we moved up, what, five spots last week. We're fine with that. Penn State and UCLA dropped out. If we just can continue to win some games, I got to imagine they got to give us a little bit of respect here soon. So that's uh, really, really nice. The Heisman watch. Oh, did Sam Howell overtake us? No, it's uh, it's been pretty stagnant. It's been a small change at the bottom as Darwin Barlow will pop up into that fifth spot. But Reese just continues to win. I think his average now this season is over 100 yards per game. Gonna definitely get a thousand yards on the season, up to 20 rushing touchdowns. So he's having a very, very good year. As one final little look, we'll take out uh, some season leaders uh, Ryan Helinski and Sam Howell at uh, South Carolina and North Carolina leading the charge in passing yards. Helinski, 2,700 way above everybody, and Grayson's down in 25th, which actually isn't too bad with 1,700 passing yards so far. Rushing-wise, Reese is 10th in the country with his 903. Honestly, not that far behind the guy from Air Force, B. Roberts. And I think that, you know, if he just continues to move, I would be more than happy with a top 10 performance from him. Receiving-wise, Dion Fountain is our team's receiving leader with 598 yards. He's a ways off of that, uh, one of those top two spots, but still not too bad off. Again, we discount tackle leaders just because of the way that... Uh, Tackles are calculated between like simmed games and played games. Something with assisted tackles don't show up as much. So it shows our guys as having uh, three of the top five. But realistically, that's not the case. Sack leaders does matter. Sidney McRae is our sack leader at three. We're not getting a whole lot of sacks this year. Uh, if he's down at 166, that's not too good. And interception wise, we're not getting a whole lot of those either. Jordan Morris is our pick leader with two on the year down at 190th. How about kicking wise? We haven't really kicked many field goals, so I don't expect to be very long. And yeah, Frederick, 119th in the country with a 33 yarder. Uh, I don't think he has a chance to crack even close to the top 10. With all that done though, that's going to do it for this episode. What an absolute fantastic game. Uh, the defense and the offense, both teams performed from start to finish. Um, and how about the fact that we actually played a game in destroyed on the turnover differential that will make us look a lot better going forward we were like minus 12 on the season that brings us back to minus nine if we can get that to like minus five by the end of the year i'll be i'll be happy with that for sure but if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching uh please if you're not already feel free to subscribe it means a lot and it helps out quite a bit as well so yeah, if you want to turn the, the red button gray, that would be fantastic. And while you're down there, maybe head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's a link to get the college football revamped mod if you want it for yourself. But besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.